EtherCAT is a high-speed field bus developed by Beckhoff Automation. We manufacture two different products that enable our drives to be integrated into an EtherCAT network. Our Digitax HD model M753 servo drive and our SI EtherCAT integration module. In this video, I will be demonstrating how to configure EOE or Ethernet over EtherCAT on an EtherCAT master device so that you are able to use our Connect software to commission the host drive using an Ethernet connection. So if you're ready, let's get started. Unlike other Ethernet-based field buses, EtherCAT networks do not include Ethernet switches or hubs. Therefore, to communicate with a field device, such as one of our drives, an alternative method of communication needs to be established so that they can be commissioned. Why? Once a drive or integration module is connected to the network, all communication is routed through the master over EtherCAT. EOE permits the creation of a virtual Ethernet port on the master that can then be used to access the field devices such as our drives and integration modules using Ethernet. Drive commissioning can also be performed without the need to configure EOE. The accessories required to do that depend upon which drive you are using. If you're using an SI EtherCAT integration module on a Unidrive M700 or M702, then you may connect your PC directly to the Ethernet ports on those drives. If you're using an SI EtherCAT module on a Unidrive M701, then you'll need a model number CT-USB-Cable. RS-485 Serial Programming Cable. If you're using an SI EtherCAT module on a Commander drive, you'll need a CT-USB-Cable Serial Programming Cable and an AI-485 Adapter. If you're using a Digitax HD M750 with an SI EtherCAT module, you may connect directly to the drive's Ethernet ports. If you're using a Digitax HD M753, you'll need a KI Compact 485 adapter and a CT-USB serial programming cable. Watch now as I demonstrate how to configure EOE on a master running TwinCAT software. I'm going to demonstrate how to configure EOE on a Digitax M753. I have my EtherCAT project started and I have scanned and located the drive which is right here. So I'm going to expand that device tree a little bit and I'll click on the device itself now to open up the properties. To configure EOE that's done here in the EtherCAT tab and then advanced settings. So the EOE settings are here in the mailbox. So if I expand that and then click EOE, here are the EOE settings. So this is what you want. You want to make sure that IP port is selected as shown here. This first address is the address that you're going to assign to the drive. It's a virtual IP address, so as long as there's no other drives with the same last digit or octet, you're good to go. So that's the IP address of the drive now, and this is the IP address of the network connector on my laptop. So that's all I need to do. I'll click OK. And now I'm going to activate the configuration, like so. And we'll start TwinCAT in run mode now. OK, so we are running, as you can see down here. Now just to verify or to show you that it worked, I'll open Connect. 
So here's our Connect commissioning software. And I am going to say New Project from Network Scan. Now this is important. You don't want to scan Ethernet. You want to scan Ethernet Network via Gateway EOE right there. So I'll click on that and the communication scanner will begin. Now understand that my uh, Ethernet cable is connected directly to the EtherCAT port on the M753 and there it found it. There's the virtual IP address that we assigned. So I'll just finish by coming here. And there we go. So at this point I could go online and do my commissioning. And of course when I'm finished I'm going to save those parameters in the drive. So that's all there is to it when it comes to configuring EOE. Thanks very much for watching, and as always, thank you for choosing Control Techniques.